arguably some of the most significant research to come out of Biosphere 2 originally came out of the ocean. So this system was one of the first places to show a direct connection between increasing atmospheric CO2 and the negative impact that it has on coral calcification rates. We knew that our coral health around the world was declining at a rapid rate and we were able to connect with Ruth Gates in the Gates Lab at the Hawaiian Institute of Marine Biology and she was doing incredible, innovative work looking at how to identify corals that are more resilient to these temperature changes that we're seeing happening. And she was doing it at a lab scale and she saw our system, this you know, million gallon tank behind me here. And her entire body lit up saying, we could do science here that we can't do anywhere else in the world. And from that point forward, our focus was on how to renovate this system and bring it back to life so that we can do life-changing studies looking at coral reef ecology. The first thing we needed to do was we needed to modernize the heat exchanger, that unit that allows us to heat and cool this water. Now what the researchers can do is they can call up and say, I want to increase the ocean temperature by, for example, 2 degrees C, and I want to do it in a 24-hour period. We can do that super precisely. when reefs die off around the world, algae tends to take over. Those species that are around coral reefs that tend to keep algae away usually also go away when coral reefs die. So you see these mass algae blooms occur. And pretty much every surface is coated with algae. And that's what we had out here at the Biosphere 2 Ocean for some time. And in the last six months, we've started to extract that algae. And so we've got teams of divers out here, um, our research staff that goes in and actually hand pulls this algae out. We've pulled about 10,000 pounds of algae out by hand in the last six months. The second thing that we're looking to do now as part of this engineering and design was to look at, okay, if we want to grow corals in this system, one of the things that we need to do is we need to make sure that we've got enough light for them to grow. The latitude that Biosphere 2 is at is a hindrance in some respects for growing corals if you're just using natural light because it's much less than that that you would find in a lot of these Caribbean or, or tropical regions. So what we can do is we can actually supplementally light the system. We can add trusses over it and very strategically place these additional lights. So that's going to be phase two. Phase one is this heat exchanger. Phase two is going to be adding the necessary infrastructure so that we can light the system. Now what's really exciting in conjunction with this though is the team has been very closely looking at the water chemistry. And again, they've been able to confirm that we have a very stable system and that now what we can do is we can look to make new introductions into the system to build the complexities of the community that we have to complement the type of research that they want to do. Last year, April 2019, we introduced 22 fish. This was the first fish introduction since 1996. So it hadn't been up until this point that we felt the ocean was healthy enough to reintroduce a species like that. So we introduced two species. We introduced um, red band parrotfish and ocean surgeon fish. And these fish have been in here living in the system um, for a year now and have been really successful. So we have about seven species of fish, over 40 fish, individual fish in here right now. And we will continue to add to that as time goes on to develop this community that we want. Other than fish, we have some invertebrates and these invertebrates are incredibly important to the system. We've got some red-legged hermit crabs, top crown snails, uh, short spine urchins, and all of these animals were introduced to really help us eat the algae in the system.
have our first uh, coral raceway here at the Biosphere 2. And this raceway is a 700 gallon tank that has a full life support system and it's completely isolated from the Biosphere 2 ocean behind me here. So it allows us to bring in corals, put them into this tank, and really try these experiments out and then be able to put them into the ocean here. So one of those experiments that we've been discussing with our partners is stress hardening. So it's be put these corals under stress over and over and over again, and they get stronger every time. So you push them just to their limit and then you back it off. And then you push them a little bit further next time and then you back it off the heat. So it allows us to strengthen these corals. Right here in the Sonoran Desert, we have a team of scientists that are going to give significant insight to helping this global challenge and this crisis that we see with corals around the world.